sense of, I have this problem I'm not supposed to have, I don't want to have, now what? AKA, How to Live a Happier Life with a Mood Disorder. Great title. But you know, to have such a comprehensive title, we have to break it down. So let's do that. I have this problem that I'm not supposed to have. I don't want to have. Now what? Think about this for a second. A problem that I'm not supposed to have. What does that mean? By what standards? Who said I'm not supposed to have this? Does this mean that a mood disorder was not in my plans? Didn't think I'd ever get one? And if you think about this, and like, like, does anybody have any reaction in terms of like when they think about themselves or a family member, and they think about, okay, so what happened? I mean, what kind of feelings come up when you think about, wow, this wasn't supposed to have this? Anybody? Any feelings come up when people think about it? Yes? I really did think, why is that why me? Yeah, totally why me, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Other feelings? Other other thoughts, other feelings that come up. So we have so we have two votes for uh, Linda in the back, two votes for self pity. <laughs> sure. A couple of, a couple other feelings that might come up for people. They think about a, a something they're not supposed to have. They might be angry, part of the self pity. They might be embarrassed, might have shame, might have guilt. Not not supposed to happen. How about the second part? A problem I don't want to have. I mean, who would want to have a mood disorder? Sure, I can have a, sure, can I have a stigmatizing illness that will affect me for the rest of my life, create problems for me in all arenas and all areas of my life, and can I have that to go, please? Right? So here's a problem that I don't want to have. I mean, who'd want this one? Why me? Why not me? All kinds of other feelings come up. So this whole thing, I don't want to have it, I'm not supposed to have it, this is pretty potent stuff. Could kick up a lot of feelings that people may have thought about or may not have thought about. The best thing we can do is we can give it a label. We can give it a name, some of this collection of feelings we've kind of already tapped, to, tapped on it a little bit. We're going to call this whole collection of feelings, we're going to call it about grieving. I'm talking about it as a grieving process. Now, some of you may know that grief using the, was, the whole process of grieving was started by Klubler Ross, and I forget when that was, and I can't even remember her first name. And that's whatever, someone probably knows, right? Thank you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Kubler Ross came up with this whole thing about grieving and identified some stages that all people go through when they're diagnosed with a particular illness. It's obviously true when people die, that's, that's how it comes from, but very applicable to being diagnosed with an illness. When family members go through the, family members go through the exact same process. They just, it's just a little different. So let's see, let's, so let's identify the stages and let's see how it applies. So, first stage is denial. Denial, by definition, is the refusal to admit the truth. When we deny something, it means that it's too painful to have. I want to block it away. I don't want to deal with it. Painful things come up. We don't want to deal with them. Push them away. Denial is a defense mechanism. Usually, when you have denial, you have its other cousins, because they, use, they travel as a nice family. Minimization. It's not that bad. Rationalization, you know, I only, got, I only got diagnosed because it must have been something that I ate, I've had a bad day, it's been a tough week at work. That's why it happened. So I minimize it, I rationalize it, and I, don't, and I don't have it, forget about it. People who were here, first time you got diagnosed, what happened? What was your instant response? What the hell are you talking about? Absolutely. Then what happened? Uh, I denied it. Right? Then I grieved it. Started to get upset about it. And I finally started to come to grips with, okay, what the hell am I going to do now? Right. So you, I'm glad you came here because now you're way ahead of me. It's perfect. <laughs> I'll just put you over here and I can refer to you. What's your name? Mike. Mike, thank you. Very helpful. Right? What the hell is this, right? Denial. Other people. First time. First time there are family members here and you heard that your person got diagnosed. Shay and Jared. Absolutely, right? So the first thing, we have denial, first stage. 
The next stage, one of my favorites is anger. Why is it one of my favorites? Because people get stuck there all the time. They get stuck in bargaining and depression, but we're not up to that yet. There's a lot to be angry about when you get diagnosed. To have the illness, I have to take care of it, I gotta take medications, I have the side effects, the stigmas, the insurance issues, the potential, what's gonna happen, fears about all of this. There's a lot to be angry about. Who wouldn't be angry about this? You can see why people get stuck in their anger. It gets overwhelming. And you see a lot of people who are angry about having an illness. I'm ahead of myself. And therefore, they don't take care of it because they don't want to have it. And they stay stuck in the anger. Next stage is bargaining. Now, bargaining to me is kind of a funny stage. Because in denial, I don't want it. I don't need it. I don't got it. Bargaining is like, I have it, but maybe I can negotiate with this. Maybe I can kind of say, well, you know, I got it, but maybe I can kind of, kind of make a deal. Because bargaining has kind of a mini acceptance to it. Kind of, I got it, okay, I got it. But I thought bargaining, maybe it would be a short-term illness. Maybe I, don't need, maybe I don't need meds for it. Maybe I can bargain with my higher power and say, okay, you know, if you give me a smaller illness, I'll become a more spiritual, religious person. All these bargains I'm making. Now, bargaining to me is like minimization, but I'm hoping that it's not going to be that bad. But unlike minimization, which is totally unconscious, defense maximum, I'm, I'm saying I got this, but maybe it's not going to be so bad. Maybe I can play with this a little bit. So I'm kind of saying I got it, but maybe I can play with it a little bit more. Now, when bargaining fails, the next obvious stage is depression. Now, this depression is like depression in the mood disorder and has some elements of that, but it's a special brand. This is being depressed about being depressed or more specifically, being depressed about having depression. And there's some hopelessness tossed into this because I'm always going to be depressed. There's no way out of this. Ah, it's going to be a long uphill climb, and I'm never, ever, ever going to feel better. Ah, depression. So, you can see the anger, bargaining, depression trio becomes an unhealthy trinity to be stuck. And you can loop around from anger to bargaining to depression over and over and over again, around and around and over again. And I can justify my behaviors, I can justify my feelings, and I can just be miserable. When I'm in that loop, the depression, anger, bargaining, sometimes it self sets up self-sabotage, self-defeating behaviors, and self-destructive behaviors. Because I don't want to have it, and maybe I can kind of play with this a little bit. Anybody in the group relate to that? About the self-sabotage, self-defeating, and... Right? Because that's the loop. That's where people get stuck. We see that a lot. We see that people come in, and they say, okay, I don't want this, I got it, okay, now what am I going to do? Okay, boom, well, after this, I don't want to have this. Oh, I'm really depressed, it's hopeless, it's pointless, and they go back around, and maybe they're starting to turn it around a little bit, they start to get it. And they say, ah, oh, this is too much, it's too overwhelming, I, I, I can't do this anymore. And they pull the rug out from under themselves, and they start it all over again, and over and over again. We see that when people get hospitalized, we see that when people have multiple treatments, they go to the therapist, they go to the psychiatrist, they go to the IOP, they go to the hospital, they come back around, they do it all over again, they do it all over again, they do it all over again, and they're stuck. Yes and no. They're, they're in my favorite stage of change. They're in ambivalence. Part of them knows, I know I gotta turn this around. Part of them doesn't wanna turn it around. It's scared to turn around. It's overwhelmed to turn around. And there's this tug of war inside between what I know and what I feel. And there's this battle going on 
which when I know I'm supposed to do it, everybody told me it's the right thing, it's the right thing, it's the right thing, the right thing, I gotta do it. And then it's like, oh, but it's too much. And I'm scared and I'm stuck and I'm overwhelmed and I feel terrible, I feel terrible about myself. And I feel guilty and I feel ashamed and I feel embarrassed. So for some people, they go around, they go around, they go around, they go around. And then the magic happens, the miracle happens. They say, okay, let me go to acceptance. Now acceptance, final stage, there are two points of it, two parts. There is the intellectual and there is the emotional. You hear lots of people say, yes, I have this mood disorder. Yes, I accept it. That's great. It's good. We're not talking about them. We're talking about emotional acceptance because that's, because that's where the money is. It's not about, yeah, yeah, I got it. No problem. I got it. But it's here. How do I accept it here? How do I know that I have it? And I walk through these feelings and I've walked through this whole process and it's like, got it. Now, when I emotionally accept this, that I have it, I recognize I have to work on this on a daily basis. I have to follow the recommendations of my treatment people. In serenity prayer language, I have to accept the things I cannot change. I have a mood disorder. I need to take care of it, period, emotionally. Here, I might say, okay, I got it. Let me go to the doc. Yeah, okay, my meds, good, great, fine. Let me go see my therapist. Okay, all right, so you want me to do what? Are you kidding me? No. Okay, hell with that. When I'm here, when I'm emotional with, when I have it, when, I, when it's here, it's like, okay, tell me what I have to do. I'm willing to do that. Okay, now I'm ready to do that. The emotional acceptance is the hardest part because it requires me to wrestle with all the stages, the denial, the anger, the bargaining, depression, hit acceptance. Now, here, now here's the other hard part. Today, I have acceptance. Tomorrow, I might be angry. I might be depressed. I mean, oh man, I gotta do this? Are you kidding me? So each day, is a challenge. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with wrestling through it. Even when I get it, I can go back. It would be great if the stages were like linear. Okay, first I get denial, then I go through denial, then I get you know, angry, then I go to bargaining, then I go to depression, then I go to acceptance. Be great. Very linear. We draw a graph. Yeehaw. Hit acceptance. Life is great. Time to go. Doesn't work that way. It looks, like, it looks like a drawing that a kindergarten person would do. Today I have a solution the the bargaining, depression, etc. It looks like that. Probably looks like one of my drawings, actually. Um, that's how it works. And so if we kind of accept that this process is going to be confusing, but I'm still working on it emotionally, day to day, each and every day, then we're pretty good. The key is while I'm wrestling with this, I have to do the things that make sense. I have to do the things that are healthy. I have to do the things that will keep me well. I can't say and use it as a rationalization, well, you know, I'm, I'm wrestling with this acceptance thing so, you know, tonight I'm going to get good and drunk and I'm not going to take my medication and I'm going to go out and, you know, stay out for the next five days being drunk and not taking my medication because I'm wrestling with, no, 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 no. It means I'm not going to do the things that are bad for me. I'm going to do the things that are healthy for me while I'm wrestling, while I'm struggling, while I'm figuring this out. And I'm going to go through the feelings and talk to people about the feelings. Yes and no. I mean, it, if... Absolutely. If I label and I kind of know, boy, I'm really pissed off today. Right. Right. Because then I have the awareness, wow, I'm really angry today. So what's going on? What am I, and, and, and what am I angry about? Am I angry that I have this problem? Am I angry that I have to take care of it? Am I angry that I'm just angry? Right. If it's helpful to label it as kind of a, you know, a mental check, okay, what's going on? Perfect but I don't need to know it. I can just say, boy, I'm not on my game today. What's, what's going on with me? Right? Sorry. Not a problem. Tell him I said hi. <laughs> right? 
I'm not on my game today. What's going on? I mean, am I, am I upset? Am I sad? Am I right? Because sometimes I might have the I'm not on my game today feeling more of than I know what's going on, and I may have to kind of figure it out. Oh, okay, that's why I'm upset. Great question. Thank you. Other questions, other comments? Half the battle is for you to recognize that he's wrestling and that on any given day, he might be better and he might be worse. And at 19, he might have a lot of anger about having this. You know, think about it. As a 19-year-old, he's basically been given a death sentence mm -hmm. that for the rest of his adult life, he's going to be having this. He's going to have this mood disorder. And everybody tell, has told him what he can't do. He can't drink. He can't drug. He has to take his medication. Blah, 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 blah. Right. That's exactly what we're going through. Right? I mean, it's a death sentence for a 19-year-old. Because all of his friends in the 18 to 25 demographic are out there having a grand old time doing the things that most 18 to 25s do. And he's sitting at home. Well... Here's another exciting night for me on the, um, see, well, how, many, how many channels we got? You know, what did Bruce say? There's 50 channels and nothing's on. Well, now I have 800 channels and nothing's on. Well, that's part of the problem. He is out there with them, drinking and wow. doing that. And it's, you so know, that's even harder. Yeah. Because, and there's a part of him that knows that he shouldn't be doing it. Right. So the hard part for you is recognizing that he's wrestling and he's struggling. Mm -hmm. Does he talk to you about that? Sometimes he'll tell me if he's having a good day or a okay. bad day. Right. So the best that you can do is encourage him. He's, he has a therapist? Uh, he has a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. Who work, but he's in New Jersey and actually uh, the psychiatrist is, but he's going to school up in Burlington, Vermont. Right. So, so the key well, for him, because it was in college too. Yes. Wow. So that's even harder. Yeah. Right. Because, right. So then the best thing that you can do is encourage him to get involved with treatment people. Mm-hmm to find a DBSA group if such an animal exists in Burlington, Vermont? Yeah, the school does have counselors Good. there that help for depression right. and anxiety and stress and right because Right, because, because, they, because they're going to get it. I mean, because if he's got people he can talk to about it, that's half the battle. Well, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. Right. He, he, Best you can do is encourage. You can cheer okay. and you can root. Okay. And you can recognize that what he's going through is pretty normal. If he were 19 as a college student, he'd be doing all the same things. Right. Right? And he'd have his ups and he'd have his downs and he'd have his good days and his bad days and that's what they do. Add in the mood disorder piece and he's got both. Mm -hmm. okay. That's what makes it hard. And you can loop around from anger to bargaining to depression over and over and over again. Around and around and over again. And I can justify my behaviors, I can justify my feelings, and I can just be miserable. When I'm in that loop, the depression, anger, bargaining, sometimes it self sets up self-sabotage, self-defeating behaviors, and self-destructive behaviors. Because I don't want to have it, and maybe I can kind of play with this a little bit. Anybody in the group relate to that? About the self-sabotage, self-defeating, and... Right? Because that's the loop. That's where people get stuck. We see that a lot. We see that people come in and they say, okay, I don't want this. I got it. Okay, now what am I going to do? Okay, boom, I'm after this, I don't want to have this. Oh, I'm really depressed. That's hopeless. It's pointless. And they go back around and maybe they're starting to turn it around a little bit. They start to get it. And they say, ah, oh, this is too much. It's too overwhelming. I, I, I can't do this anymore. And they pull the rug out from under themselves. And they start it all over again, and over and over again. We see that when people get hospitalized. We see that when people have multiple treatments. They go to the therapist. They go to the psychiatrist. They go to the IOP. They go to the hospital. They come back around. They do it all over again. They do it all over again. They do it all over again, and they're stuck. Yes and no. They're, they're in my favorite stage of change. They're in ambivalence. Part of them knows, I know I've got to turn this around. Part of them doesn't want to turn it around. It's scared to turn around. It's overwhelmed to turn around. And there's this tug of war inside between what I know and what I feel. 
and there's this battle going on between I know I'm supposed to do it, everybody told me it's the right thing, it's the right thing, it's the right thing, it's the right thing, I gotta do it. And there's like, ah, but it's too much. And I'm scared and I'm stuck and I'm overwhelmed and I feel terrible, I feel terrible about myself. And I feel guilty and I feel ashamed and I feel embarrassed. So for some people they go around, they go around, they go around, they go around, and then the magic happens, the miracle happens. They say, okay, let me go to acceptance. Now acceptance, final stage, there are two points of it, two parts. There's the intellectual and there's the emotional. You hear lots of people say, yes, I have this mood disorder, yes, I accept it, that's great, it's good. We're not talking about them. We're talking about emotional acceptance because that's, because that's where the money is. It's not about, yeah, yeah, I got it, no problem, I got it, but it's here. How do I accept it here? How do I know that I have it? And I walk through these feelings and I've walked through this whole process and I say, got it. Now, when I emotionally accept this, that I have it, I recognize I have to work on this on a daily basis. I have to follow the recommendations of my treatment people. In serenity prayer language, I have to accept, accept the things I cannot change. I have a mood disorder. I need to take care of it, period, emotionally. Here, I might say, okay, I got it. Let me go to the doc. Yeah, okay, my meds, good, great, fine, fine. Let me go see my therapist. All right, so you want me to do what? Are you kidding me? No. Okay, how about that? When I'm here, when I'm emotional with, when I have it, when, I, when it's here, it's like, okay, tell me what I have to do. I'm willing to do that. Okay, now I'm ready to do that. The emotional acceptance is the hardest part because it requires me to wrestle with all the stages, the denial, the anger, the bargaining, depression, hit acceptance. Now, here, now here's the other hard part. Today, I have acceptance. Tomorrow, I might be angry. I might be depressed. I mean, oh man, I gotta do this? Are you kidding me? So each day, is a challenge. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with wrestling through it. Even when I get it, I can go back. It would be great if the stages were like linear. Okay, first I get denial, then I go through denial, then I get you know, angry, then I go to bargaining, then I go to depression, then I go to acceptance. It'd be great. Very linear, we draw a graph, yeehaw, hit acceptance, life is great, time to go. Doesn't work that way. It looks, like, it looks like a drawing that a kindergarten person would do. Today I have a certain kind of the bargaining depression or something. It looks like that. Probably looks like one of my drawings, actually. Um, that's how it works. And so if we kind of accept that this process is going to be confusing, but I'm still working on it emotionally, day to day, each and every day, then we're pretty good. The key is while I'm wrestling with this, I have to do the things that make sense. I have to do the things that are healthy. I have to do the things that will keep me well. I can't say and use it as a rationalization, well, you know, I'm, I'm wrestling with this acceptance thing so, you know, tonight I'm going to get good and drunk and I'm not going to take my medication and I'm going to go out and, you know, stay out for the next five days being drunk and not taking my medication because I'm wrestling with, no, 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 no. It means I'm not going to do the things that are bad for me. I'm going to do the things that are healthy for me while I'm wrestling, while I'm struggling, while I'm figuring this out. And I'm going to go through the feelings and talk to people about the feelings. Yes and no. I mean, it, if... Absolutely. If I label and I kind of know, boy, I'm really pissed off today. Right. Be right. Because then I have the awareness, wow, I'm really angry today. So what's going on? What am I, and, and, and what am I angry about? Am I angry that I have this problem? Am I angry that I have to take care of it? Am I angry that I'm just angry? Right. If it's helpful to label it as kind of a, you know, a mental check, okay, what's going on? Perfect but I don't need to know it. I can just say, boy, I'm not on my game today. What's, what's going on with me? Right? Sorry. No problem. Tell him I said hi. <laughs> right? 
right? I'm not on my game today. What's going on? I mean, am I, am I upset? Am I sad? Am I right? Because sometimes I might have the I'm not on my game today feeling more of than I know what's going on, and I may have to kind of figure it out. Oh, okay, that's why I'm upset. Great question. Thank you. Other questions? Other comments? 